usually I'm not afraid to follow an act, but that is one act I follow. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, young people. Amen. You know, each week we pray for an increase in vocations to marriage, priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. You know, and that's a very Catholic understanding of vocation. It's an understanding that says that God calls us to one purpose in life in which that we will seal in a sacrament or another sacred commitment. And so we identify those vocations as marriage and priesthood and diaconate and religious life. And while they are all certainly vocations, they're not the only vocations in life. We all have a vocation because a vocation is simply something that God calls us to. That's where the word vocation comes from, vocal, to call. And so I think maybe a, a better definition of vocation rather than one that is a sacrament is one that one spiritual writer said was that a vocation is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. And God is the one who knows what the need is, and God knows what joy to call you to. So that in your vocation, you discover what gives you the greatest joy in life. And you know, that may be one thing throughout your life. It may be something that changes at different parts of your life. But our task is to know that God is always calling us to joy. And that if we can discover that joy and live it, God will match that greatest joy to the world's greatest need. In our gospel today, we hear the story of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. And St. Luke puts it in the context, really, of a vocation. If you are taking notes, if you're uh, using our homily cards or our journal, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. Luke 9, 51 to 62. So St. Luke starts us off by saying that when the days for his being taken up were fulfilled, Jesus resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem. Now you see, for St. Luke, Jesus being taken up is a reference to his death and resurrection and his ascension to the Father, all of which is going to occur in Jerusalem. And you see, this is the event that's going to meet, really, the world's singular and greatest need, which is the reconciliation of us to God in Jesus Christ. So that for Jesus, his greatest joy is to do the will of the Father and to reconcile us to God with his life, death, and resurrection. So that this is really Jesus' vocation, to live out his greatest joy to meet our greatest need. And he sets off on his vocation, on his journey to Jerusalem. And what follows in the story for St. Luke is all of the obstacles that can come in our way as we pursue that which gives us 
great joy. So he tells us, for example, on the way they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there. But they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. Now, you know, we all know, and it's very important for our young people to know, that as much as we set off on our journey to discover the joy in our life, rarely is it a straight shot. Often, life throws us all kinds of curves and roadblocks and obstacles. And that's what's happening here. Samaria has become an obstacle for Jesus. But what he really points out is that it's not Samaria that's the obstacle. It's the response of James and John that's the true obstacle. Because you see, when we run into those obstacles in our, in our lives, it's understandable that we become frustrated and even angry at the fact that we can't accomplish what is something good to accomplish. And then we begin to stew and fester in that anger. And we look to take revenge on those who are in our way. And Jesus says there's no time for that. Anger itself is not a bad thing. Anger is something that sim we feel simply when we see that something is wrong. There's something that's not right. It's unfair. It's unjust. And it raises anger within us. And that can be good because it can motivate us to change the situation around us. So if you get angry, understand what you're angry about. And why are you angry? And what needs to change? And how can you be part of that? Because if you simply stew and simmer in your anger, it will ultimately consume you, as St. Paul tells us. And you see, if you allow your anger to consume you, you lose sight of what gives you joy. <laughs> Leave it alone, he says. Let's move on. The journey is to joy. And there is no joy in anger alone. As they were proceeding on their journey, St. Paul tells us, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. I think this is the most important thing for all of us to remember about vocation. Vocation is about joy, not about fun. You see, we can pursue our vocation, and it can be difficult for us and it may be uncomfortable for us. And we may get discouraged because we don't feel like we fit in. But you see, the point of a vocation, the point of answering God's call is not to have fun. We hope to have fun, and you can have fun, and I hope you have fun in the things that give you joy. But for those of you on a vocation, whether it's as parents, or as teachers, or as health care givers, of all of the kinds of vocations to help people, I hope you know it gives you joy, but is it always fun? It's not always fun. And unfortunately, sometimes when we hit those times where it's not fun, we decide that maybe this isn't the vocation for us that if it were really the right vocation, we would always be having fun at it. But you see, the question is, does it give you joy, which is deeper than fun? 
Joy goes into your soul. It gives you value and worth and dignity and character. And even though it may not be fun, it will be the joy that gets you through the tough times. Jesus does not preach a prosperity gospel. You know, the, the, the preachers who tell you, you will know you are blessed when all of the riches and all of the friends and all of the fame comes your way. That's when you will know you are blessed. Jesus preaches the reality gospel. He knows that there is hardship in life. He encounters it and we encounter it. But you will know you are blessed when you feel the joy deep within your heart and soul. That's when you know you are blessed. And to another person, Jesus said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But Jesus answered him, let the dead bury the dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds to me awfully harsh. If I've just lost a loved one and I need to go bury that loved one, it seems unfeeling for Jesus to say, forget about that and go proclaim the kingdom of God. But I'm not so sure that's really what's happening in this passage. What more likely is happening is this person is saying, all right, Jesus, I will come and follow you. But there are other things I need to take care of. So let me take care of my father. Let me make sure he's happy and everything. And when he's not around, maybe I'll consider then to come follow you. You see, often when we know we're being called to something and we're not sure whether we really want to get started with it, we think of reasons to delay our response. Maybe we're thinking of people we have to please first or get their approval before we can undertake our journey. Maybe there are just certain things we feel that are important for us to do and we'd rather do them first and worry about a vocation later. But you see, what Jesus is saying is that there is life with him. And if you're going to delay your response to his life and to his call, then you may as well be dead and let the dead bury the dead. But if you want life, Start on your vocation now. Discover now what brings you joy and be about it. Because tomorrow is promised to no one. And we just might not get there. But if you start on your journey today and you pursue what will give you joy, you will always have life. Another said to him, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. And to him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The point seems self-evident. Joy is always ahead of us, not behind us. When we start to turn around and start to second-guess our decisions of the past, when we start to wonder whether maybe our best days are behind us and there's nothing ahead of us, that's when we lose our way. And that's the case whether you're 16 years old or whether you're 60 years old or whether you're even older than that. Keep your eyes on the prize, St. Paul always tells us. There is always another joy out there for you. And if you're not experiencing it now, then look ahead, not behind you, because there is no joy in the past. There is only joy in the here and now and what 
is to come. So, amen. So four things that Jesus teaches us. Anger, let it motivate you, but don't be consumed by it. Fun, I hope it will be, but you're looking for joy, not for fun. Delay, no way. Start now. And looking back, say goodbye. Jesus is pointing us forward. You see, we'll always have these challenges in our vocation, no matter what our vocation is. Whether it is to minister in the church, whether it's to raise a family, whether it's to serve and help others in need, whether it's to work for justice in our world, there will always be obstacles and things that try to turn us around. And when we experience that, sometimes we feel like the price is just too high. And I wonder if that's because we think sometimes what will give us joy is different from what God wants of us. But you see, it's God who wants the joy for you. And it's God who will match that joy to the greatest needs of the world. So we don't have to worry about everything. We just have to get started on what gives us joy. So if you're working on your worksheet, here is today's question. At this time, at this point in your life, what gives you the greatest joy in life? And how is God calling you to that? What gives you the greatest joy in life? And how is God calling you to that? God wants us all to know joy in our lives. And God wants our greatest joy to meet the world's greatest need. But rather than just assume God will do it all, why not just believe that God will do it all? And rather than just believe that God has a vocation for us, why not just start to live it? Amen.